Welcome to another Fast Tip video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to delete the sample data out of your database before you release it. All right, so you've spent some time, you built yourself a cool little database, you want to release it to your friends, your family, your coworkers, whoever, right? But you got a bunch of records in it like me. I got a bunch of sample records in mine. I don't want to necessarily have everybody get a hold of all my sample data. But I want to keep a copy of it for myself so that I can still use it for future development, right? Yeah, I got my contacts all in here. I got my customers all in here. I got orders and details and stuff that I don't necessarily want going out in the final product. But I also have some tables in here, like the version history table that I want to leave. You might have tables with supporting data in it that's valuable. Like you might have a table that's got a list of states or a list of regions or zip code or whatever. So some of this data's got to go, some of it's got to stay, and you don't want to have to go in here and open this up, all right, select all the records, delete them, open the next one up, select all the records, delete them. You don't want to do that every time you have a release. And I used to have some databases where I'd post releases, you know, a couple times a week. So I want one button I can click on that just does the job for me. Now I'm going to show you a simple way to do it, and then I'm going to show you a better way to do it. Now I didn't stamp the good old developer thingy, right? Yeah, this is PowerPoint. I didn't stamp this on here because you can do this without coding, but it's a little better if you do it with some coding. So we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to show you a way to do it without coding first. Then I'm going to show you how to, with just a couple lines of VBA, you can do some really cool stuff. Okay. So prerequisite for this video, if you haven't watched my delete queries video, go watch this first. This is what we're going to use. It's a, a delete query is a query. Not all queries are for viewing and sorting data. Some are called action queries, and they can do stuff. They can change your data. They can, you can add records. You can update records. You can make whole tables, and you can delete records. That's what a delete query does. This is important. Go watch this if you don't know what a delete query is. And while you're at it, if you want to learn a little VBA and you've never done VBA before, go watch this. About 20 minutes long. Teach you everything you need to know. All right, just a couple lines of code, but you got to know where to put them. And I'm going to show you in just a minute. Okay, so the first thing is just pick any tables that you've got to just delete all the information out of, like the order table, for example. All this stuff's got to go. Order detail T's got to go. All right, so we're going to create delete queries. We're just going to do one for now. All right, actually, I'm going to do, I'm going to do two. I'm going to do two delete queries just to show you the simple way to do this. All right, so create query design. We've done this in before in the delete query video. I'm going to bring in the order detail table. It's always best to delete the child records first especially because if you've created relationships and you've enforced referential integrity, then you can't delete the orders if they have details. So I always like to start with the bottom most child records first and then go backwards. But I don't usually enforce referential integrity in my databases. Why? It's a big, long story. Uh, I will talk about it in another video. But we'll start with this one. And I just want to delete everybody out of here. So we're going to change this to a delete query. And then we're just going to bring in the star. And we're going to run it. And that's it. Order detail should be empty. Yep, it is. Okay, and then we're going to save this as order detail delete queue. There you go. There's that one. Okay, then you'll do the same thing for the order T and the contact T. Customer T, I like to do a little bit different because I like to always leave my record as record one in every database that I send out for a couple of reasons. One, that shows some sample data. And two, it gives you my contact information in case you need to get a hold of me. Right there's my address. There's my actual business phone number. Uh, what's this? my email address is in here somewhere? Where is it? Yep, that's my actual email address. So I leave it in there. So I'm going to make this delete query and leave record one. Okay. So for this guy, we're going to go create query design. We're going to bring in the customer table. We're going to change it to a delete query. This time I'm going to bring in the customer ID. Right where criteria is not one. We say less than greater than one, right? Looks like that. Okay, less than, greater than one. This is not one. Okay, now if I run this, take a peek at it, customer T. Oh, look, there's just me left. All right, delete all the records that are not customer ID one. Save it, customer, delete, Q. Now we got two of them in there. Okay, and you'll do the same thing for every different one Every different table that you want to delete will leave some tables alone, like my version history table, your state table, your zip code list table, whatever supporting data that you do want to give to your end user, right? Now, if you don't want to do any VBA coding, that's it. You'll just have to go and manually run these delete queries by yourself. 
sit here and just double click on each one and it'll delete those tables and then you're done. But if you want to learn a little tiny bit of VBA, you'll do some fun stuff. Let's make a button that'll do it for us. And I'll just utilize this button. You're going to want to probably put this button somewhere on like a manager menu or tuck it away hidden somewhere. All right. I'm going to say delete sample data. And this not only is good for, um, for deleting records to like distributed database, but also if you have a super secure database with lots of information here that's sensitive, you know, and you want to give a copy of it to someone else to look at for, for database purpose, for structure purposes, then you don't have to give them all your data. Like I used to tell customers when they, when I used to do consulting work, when they used to send me their data, I'd tell them delete any sensitive information out of it. So just delete all your customer information, credit card data, leave me a couple sample records so I know what's going on, but I don't, I don't want all of your sensitive data. Okay, so in this button now, we're going to right-click Build Event. Okay, here we are. We're in the Hello World button click. That's fine. All right, we're going to go... Uh, let's just get rid of that. Okay. Now, to run those update queries that you made, it's this simple. It's do command dot open query and then the name of the query. Customer delete Q. Right? Whoop. No single quote. Okay, and then the next one. What's the next one? It would be, uh, you know, order, detail, delete, queue. And that's it. And then when you're done, status, done. Okay, that's the minimum of all you'd have to do right there. All right, and if I close this, and here, I'll just test it. I'll put another customer in here real quick. Okay, so let's go to main menu and test it. Ready, click, done, open up the customer, and there, okay? That's the simplest way you could do it if you just want to open query all of those. Okay, but wait, there's more. Let's, let's have some fun. Let's, let's do some more stuff. All right, the next thing I want to do is before someone accidentally clicks the big red button that says do not push this button, I want to give them a warning message. Now, in a previous video, I showed you how to do a are you sure message box. All right, this guy. I'll put a link to it down below. Right, you can pop this guy up. It'll say, are you sure? You know. Yes or no. But I don't want to make it that easy for the user to delete all of the data in the database. All right. So we're going to make them actually type in the word, whatever, delete. Okay. So for that, we're going to use an input box where we actually have them type in something. I use it in this video to have them type in a manager password. Okay. So up top here, we're going to dim S as a string. We're making our own variable called S. And then we're going to say down here, S equals input box. All right. What's the prompt? Uh, warning, this will delete, let's put here, delete all data in the database. Continue. Uh, let's say, uh, to continue, type delete like that. I'll put it inside of single quotes. Okay. And, and they'll have to assume it's, don't put the single quotes there too. Okay. Comma, what the title is, delete like that, whatever. And we don't, we don't want a default value or any other stuff. Okay, so it's going to prompt the user. It says, hey, this will delete all the data in the database. To continue, type delete. So they're going to type something in and press enter, and that's going to return a value and put that value in S. So we're going to say, if S is not delete, then exit sub. That means they, they're not sure. They didn't type in delete. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. And if you've never worked with variables or if then statements before, I got videos on that. I'll put links down below. Okay, but assuming they do that and they get past that point, now you can go ahead and run your delete queries. Okay. Save that. Come back out here. Click the button. Warning, this will delete all data in the database. To continue, type delete. If I type in cat, right, nothing happens. Do it again. Type in delete. Yeah, it's not case sensitive. Enter, and then it's done. And yeah, there's ways you can make it so it is case sensitive. That's a different video. <laughs> you use the string comparison function. Anyways, so that shows you how to make sure the user's sure. Run your deletes, put all your delete queries here, and then done. Now, if you want to be even cooler with the cool kids, okay, there's a way to do this without having to make all of these different delete queries. Okay, and that's to learn a little bit of SQL. SQL is the language that powers these queries. And Access does a fantastic job of giving you this nice, pretty query by example, they call it, right? This thing here, it's, it's beautiful, it's graphical. It's how I learned. I love it. I learned how to do this years before I finally learned SQL. But behind this is, right-click, 
SQL view is this. It's a language, and it's real simple to use. Not that hard. Delete from order detail T. That's it. That deletes the records. The other one's a little more complicated, my customer one, because we've got a criteria on there, right? SQL view. But it's delete from customer table where the customer ID is not one. It's not hard, folks. You want to learn a little bit? You want a little taste? Come here. I got, I got a taste for you. Go watch this video. It's about 20-ish minutes long, 25 minutes. Shows you the basics of SQL. I wish I would have had this when I was getting started. Because SQL did not come easy to me. I learned basic programming when I was like eight years old. So, you know, programming line by line was a whole lot easier for me. The, the concept of database queries and SQL, it, 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 my 20-some-year-old my brain had a hard time with it when I first learned it. But now it's easy once you get the hang of it. And I'll, I'll help you get the hang of it. But you can do this now. We can get rid of these delete queries. Delete. We deleted the delete queries. You see what we did there? <laughs> Now there's two ways you can run SQL statements in your code. You can do do command run SQL, which has its benefits. And then there's another way, which is database.execute. I prefer current db.execute. There's a lot of reasons why. I got a whole different video coming out on that for the more advanced students, which one's better and why. But for now, just trust me, I, I like this one better. All right, you put in here your SQL statement to delete whatever you want to delete. So delete star from order detail C. That's it. Just do a line like that for each of your SQL codes. Click, uh, delete, and done. And I didn't put anything in here to test it. Did I put something? Order one, product name, blah, blah, blah. Do it again. Click, delete, and gone. Okay. And then for the other one, Right, you'd you'd then you'd whoop! I just hit that hit Control A by accident. Where are we? Right down here. All right, then for the next one. All right, then we'll delete from our order table. All right, then we'll delete from our. See how easy this is? Instead of making all these different queries, you just uh, put the ones in here you want. All right, so we'll do our contact table next, right? Contact T. And then I can't type today. And then finally, we'll do the customer table, where customer ID is not one, just like that, okay? And in some versions of SQL, like SQL Server, you don't need that star there. I like to leave it there. SQL is slightly different depending on what platform you are, how you're on. And there's ANSI 92 and 89 and all kinds of other stuff. So I'm just, I focus on these, in these, in these videos, I focus on just SQL for access, right? If we're doing SQL Server stuff, I'll let you know. All right, but now, Right, click, delete, and we're done. And all these tables now should be empty. And ready for distribution. Okay, and one more cool little thing you might want to do before you're done is compact the database, right? Because you had all that sample data in there. Let's get rid of all that empty space. If you don't know what compacting your database is, I'll go watch this video. And to do that, we just come up to database tools, click compact and repair, and save changes, yep. And then and it should look like it closes and reopens. Come on. And there it goes. That's it. Yes, you can compact and repair from VB, but there's some tricks. Because you can't compact and repair the currently open database from VB without closing it and then opening up another database or saving it. It's a long story. I got a video on this coming out, and I got a template coming out uh, to show you how to compact and repair all of the databases in a folder. So look for that in the next couple of days. But there you go. There's your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the Show More link down below the video to find additional resources and links You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video 
After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.